Over the last 20 years, farms have increased herd size, but not necessarily increased the size of the storage. Now, with the introduction of the SAFO regulations in 1991 and the renewal of them again in 2010, slurry storage has become important. So a lot of farms are looking at increasing storage to ensure that they comply fully with the regulations, as well as getting the maximum benefit out of the slurry that they are storing due to the price of fertiliser costs, etc. Well, the main points to consider are basically the site to start with. You need to look at what aspects of the site are important and where you need to locate the slurry storage. On this particular site here, the farm is built on red sandstone, so they, were, they didn't really have an option of an earth bank lagoon or a, a tin tank, so they looked at a shuttered concrete facility that would be large enough to contain all the slurry produced. Another consideration you need when siting the store is that the store's proximity to a watercourse, a well or a drinking source. The store has to be more than 10 metres away from any watercourse, and that includes ditches or any clean drain, or 50 metres away from a drinking source or a well. Well, an important thing, especially with a store like this, is you need to look at the water table. If there's a build-up of water beneath a shuttered concrete slurry store, pressure can get to such a state that they can actually fracture the floor or even in the worst case, pop the store out of its setting. Well, the, the main regulation you need to consider on a new slurry store is it has to have four months total slurry storage capacity. Now that needs to contain all slurry produced by the stock on the farm, all dirty water produced on the farm, and any parlour and dairy washings that need to go into the facility. Now on top of that, you also need to consider the rainfall that falls onto the surface of the lagoon. Now calculating the annual rainfall figure and just using the winter month's volume isn't enough. The Environment Agency, as part of the regulations, insists on using the M5 rainfall figure, which will be the heaviest period of rainfall over a 120 day spell. Now that figure needs to be used as your average figure. You need to get that figure from the Met Office, they can supply you with the figure, but it's essential really that that figure is used during the calculation, because that will determine the overall volume of the slurry store. Well as part of getting the, the slurry store passed by the Environment Agency, the lagoon has to comply with BS 5502. The lagoon, a shuttered concrete store, has to have a structural engineer's design and certificate at the end to ensure that it's been designed to cope with the volumes of slurry that have been put in it and that the walls are suitably built to cope with the volumes of stress that are put against them. Once you've established the volume of material you need to store, then, it's, then you need to calculate the size of the lagoon to suit. Now not only does the lagoon have to have the four month storage capacity as a minimum, you also need to consider the freeboard requirement on top of the lagoon. Now on a shuttered concrete store like this one, you're looking at a 300 millimeter freeboard, which is basically space from top of slurry to top of store. It's a free space that acts as a barrier in case of any emergencies, there's enough volume available to collect any surplus material if there is ever an incident on the farm. But with this particular store, you can see they've put the safety fence around the boundary. Now that is a critical part. The store won't be legal unless it's got a safety fence around the perimeter to prevent anybody falling in or any accidents occurring. The fence has to have a minimum height of 1.5 meters and has to encompass the whole boundary of the store. They also, the other consideration you need with a slurry store is you would more than likely need planning permission from the local authority. Now it's far better to discuss the proposal with the local authority on site before you put any plans in so you can establish their thoughts and if there are any issues that they may want to address you, can, you know in advance. It saves money in the long run to get the store designed and discussed with all parties prior to starting on site because the last thing you want is to design a store that's either too small or illegal. Before the farmer needs to think about installing a new slurry store, it's important that he establishes how much clean and dirty water he can separate. An example of this is here, you've got a sleeping policeman that is diverting dirty yard runoff directly to the store. Originally this dirty yard runoff was flowing onto the clean yard area and the store was collecting the whole volume. The installation of this sleeping policeman now separates the clean and dirty water, so the clean water can safely go to the stream or watercourse, and the dirty water is collected within the slurry store. 
This will help reduce the volume of material that actually needs to be contained and reduce the cost of spreading the material as the volume will be less than if the clean water and dirty water were entered in the store. Simple maintenance of gutters, downpipes and drains can reduce dirty water volume significantly. An example of this could be a roof 25 metres long by 10 metres wide, which equates to 250 square metres. Rainwater off this surface can produce up to 125 cubic metres, which is 27,500 gallons of rainfall over the winter period. Currently, that water would have to enter the slurry store and be contained. By fixing the guttering and directing the roof water to a clean water drain, this would save approximately 13 tank loads of dirty water over the winter period, which currently has to be collected and contained within the slurry storage system. Repairs to dripping taps, overflowing water troughs and leaking pipes around dirty areas will reduce water loss and also reduce dirty water volumes needing to be contained. Well, a circular slurry store like the one you can see here, the main advantages of that is it can be built on a site with a high water table or if you've got drainage issues, because the majority of the store is then ab above ground. As long as the site is drained properly, it should be able to build a, a circular slurry store like this at any location with a water table issue. The other main advantage of it is it's got a small surface area so it doesn't collect as much rainfall as a larger lagoon or shuttered concrete store. Well the store has been designed to have a 20 year life without maintenance anyway and will comply with the SAFO regs but obviously something of that type of store will be very difficult to repair if it is damaged and they can easily be damaged so you just need to take a lot of care around the facility really. This particular lagoon had to have a, a liner installed the clay content within the soils on this farm wasn't high enough to make the soils impermeable so the liner had to be employed to ensure that none of the liquid or slurry within the lagoon penetrated the embankments and eventually causing pollution to the subsoils. The main feature of this of this type of facility are, are, the, are the costings of it. It's quite a cheap system to install but again as with the shuttered concrete store and the tin tank this needs to be fully designed by a structural engineer. The embankments need to be designed by the structural engineer and he has to sign off the facility before it can be used. Again, as with the other two facilities, this will also need planning permission before work can start on site. The main thing that a farmer needs to consider with a lined lagoon, and this is essential really to, in to ensuring that there is no pollution from the facility, is that when mixing, the liner is not ripped. Any rip in the liner the dirty water or slurry will seep beneath the liner and potentially cause pollution. One way of solving that is to put a concrete base to the lagoon or even a concrete pad that the mixer can sit on and safely mix the contents without the risk of any damage to the surrounding liner. The two lagoons we looked at previously, the shuttered concrete lagoon and the above ground tin tank, both require a 300mm freeboard. An earth bank lagoon requires a 750mm freeboard which is considerably more than the other two. Now when the calculations are being made for the capacity of the lagoon, looking at the slurry and dirty water produced, it's important to remember that the freeboard facility has to be included in the calculations because this will make a big effect on the actual capacity of the facility and the size of the lagoon. Ideally, this needs to be discussed with the Environment Agency before work starts on site to ensure that they are happy with the volume of the facility and that it complies fully with the SAFO regulations. A requirement of the SAFO, or Slurry, Silage and Agricultural Fuel Oil Regulations, is to notify the Environment Agency of any new structures. Farmers should notify us within 14 days of bringing any new structure into use. However, we would advise that farmers speak directly with us at the pre-planning stage really to ensure that these regulations are met. For more information on how Farming Connect can help you and your diversification project, contact the Service Centre on 08456 000 813.